Kubor Nagashlem to Nongsan Hima. U Chairman of the Joint Action Committee, Bakanthop Yaka, North Eastern Hill University Teachers Association, North Eastern Hill University Non Teaching Staff, but North Eastern Hill University Students Union, Ubat Lakhan Kama. Ulawan Ra Ishibun Kijinkano, Prashayo Vice Chancellor, School Bat Nihu, Professor P.S. Shukla, Hagbala Kam, Makaladun, Rukajingle Butu, Hagrukam Tunkam, Yurohit Prasad, Kumu Technical Advisor. Naglang Batla Konling Baka Arti Ayla, Yetu Baka Kai Pot, Kalapan E. Ishibun Kijingbam Biang, Hagrukam Tunkam, Kabala Shuli, Jubor, Klemda Boot, Ikikandon Tapkam. Kawe Kabao Bakma, Lakado, Kade Halor Kijingjak Advertisement, and Nigajinpan Banapai Ba. Hello, I'm going to take a camera like Tali. Kabawandra, I'm going to take a bum code, but I'm going to take a shilling. I'm going to take a shilling. I'm going to take a shilling. I'm going to take a Vice Chancellor of School Bat Nihu, P.S. Shukla. Ula kam baka jing thung kam ka dekat kum ki kendoan thung kam. Hanray na kliang baka lakon, ula ong baka don kam man wat, bat bantok kit niya. Namar ka long persa, ya ka model cadre recruitment rules. After we have seen the press conference that was given by the Vice Chancellor, and if you don't mind, I mean, what I will do is, uh, because we have to send this message to him mainly, and that's why we will start with cutting his points that he has said to the media. So I hope you won't mind if I complete our uh, uh, rebuttal in English, and then we choose to any other language that we would like to speak. He also called about the, the power of the, uh, the, the VC. And, where he's, and before that, I would like to come to this RTI reply, which also we will be giving to you. Where he claimed by himself, that's how we came to know. Somebody asked, another one of our JEC member asked in the RTI, what was the selection, was there any advertisement? He said, no advertisement floated. What was the selection committee, who were the selection committee members? No selection committee was constituted. However, interview was conducted online by the vice chancellor. He have, he's nobody to conduct an interview, if at all it will be the selection committee, that too he cannot do it online. And that's where it is so important that he has quoted the same rule here which was adopted by the, uh, the 185th meeting of the executive council and he himself violated it. And now he is claiming without any uh, you know, uh, remorse that he has done everything right and as we have seen, we have, we have shown amply that this guy has been appointed in a wrong manner. Similarly, his salary was paid at 75,040 rupees, including the DA. The DA is inclusive of within the 75,040, 38% DA. You never paid any contractual employee a DA. At all, you have to give him a lump sum money, which is as far. So, 75,000 was paid to this person, again, violating the rule, the norms that we have, because it, you cannot pay somebody with DA without the sanctioned post that is authorized by UGC. And, and that's where he continues to, to when you look at the, 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 uh, you know, the, uh, after the uh, qualification of this guy, I, and I will be surprised, I mean, you will have a look at it. He says he has done diploma information technology. By the way, this is just an RTI reply. We have not seen any document, so really it's a big question mark there itself. Diploma information technology, 2010. BE information technology, 2030. MBA Human Resources 2016, MBA Information Technology same year 2016, I don't know how, MPhil Commerce 2017. When you look at this qualification itself, it raises serious doubt. But it doesn't concern us simply because if he has advertised the post, we would have known, we, he would have submitted a, a, a document of his mark sheets and degrees, we would have known. But here, very conveniently, the VC has avoided I am sure that at some point of time this will be proven that he probably doesn't qualify anything and none of this has any genuinity. But that doesn't matter to us because procedure has not been followed. And there we said that he has very blatantly violated the model CRR rules which is against the UGC norm and he has, he has to make answerable and he is answerable to that. Coming to the next point that he said, the executive power of VC. And he said that the VC has executive power and we would like to read this. You know, the NEHU Act Clause 12.3, which is basically this. This is the NEHU Act Clause 12.3, and I'll read it. He also read it there. It says, and I would like to read it so that it's convenient. Again, I will give a copy to every member. The Vice Chancellor may, if he is of the opinion that immediate action is necessary on any matter, exercise any power conferred on any authority of the university, 
by or under this act and shall report to such authority the action taken by him on such matter. These are actions to be taken, not appoint them. He cannot appoint a teacher or a non-teaching staff claiming under this particular clause. And hence, this clause applies to something else, that there will be an urgency to take a, a, an action, a decision, which he cannot meet. But appointments are beyond. For appointment of teachers, we have the UGC Regulation 2018, adopted by new, like all other uh, universities, including colleges. For appointment of non-teaching staff, we have the model CRR rules. Beyond that, there is nothing. There is absolutely nothing that VC can clear. However, what is important to understand is that he has not advertised the post. So we don't know the qualification of this guy. He simply seems to have picked up somebody from somewhere. We don't know because I don't think you have heard about Rohit Sharma, the, Rohit Prasad, the, the great, that he has achieved something in this country that he is somewhere in, he was working in IIT Rurki and this vice chancellor, no, pick him up and put it in him. Name. This is a blatant violation of the modern CRR VC and also a great sign of nepotism. I think probably he is one way or the other related to this vice chancellor. Otherwise, no VC will ever dare to violate such a black, with, with such so much of confidence that he's breaking all the rules. Still, dare to say that I have done everything under the rule, and we as Jack refutes this completely, and hence he is completely wrong. Now, what is important, of course, to understand is that the what is the clause that he has said that he, we don't know in this term, in his appointment letter what is the clause of termination because. He has been just appointed like that. What is the criteria? How he will be terminated? What are his terms and conditions? Nothing is known. The question that arises here is that, can you do this? Say for example, we have several posts that has been advertised. You have not given equal opportunity, so you have violated the right to equality under Article 14 of the Constitution. May he do the same thing to all educated, unemployed youth of Meghalaya? The post that has been advertised, if all educated, unemployed youths who are engineers, who are software engineers, PhD, MPhil, master degree, bachelor's degree, if all of them come and say that, please appoint me on contractual basis, because you have done for this, why not you do for all of us? Which means this is the serious violation, and that's why I'm saying, he is playing with the, the job opportunities, which are so limited here. I'm sure if he has advertised, Probably from Meghalaya itself, you would have got somebody with better qualification who sues this particular post. But he has not done it. He simply picked up somebody outside the state. We don't know how. We don't know what is his credential. We seriously doubt that. Probably there is something. There is a nefarious design behind the scene which we have to unravel as time goes by. That's why Jack is very, very strict on this. And we are very we are, we are determined that this cannot be allowed. Because tomorrow, he has also done the same, the advertisement for the post of registrar, finance officer, the, the, the university engineer, and the director, campus development uh, council with the CDC. So, tomorrow he may pick up the same different friend from Uttarakhand, from UP, from here, from there, and say that I appoint you PVC, I appoint you, you know, the finance officer, I appoint you blah, under this rule because VC is empowered and he doesn't realize that. VC is not empowered. VC as an individual is nobody unless there are rules that are to be followed as far as the recruitment is concerned. And hence, one has to be, and that's why the important thing that we have to understand is that why we are we are we are held back on making sure that he removed this person because we don't want to set precedence that tomorrow he does the same thing for all the posts, picked up somebody and say that I have picked up, I have done the interview, which is against the rule. As long as he is violating the rule. We are all set to make sure that we tell him, you remove this guy. He has been illegally appointed. He has no right whatsoever to be here. And hence, that is very important. On the other aspect, which is very important is on the role of executive council. Now, he very conveniently said the power of the executive council. And we'll come to it and see. When you look at the executive council as such, the executive council, what he did as far as his statement is, he simply took this agenda and executive council approved. And I'll read what is the power of executive council. To create administrative, comma, ministerial and other necessary posts and to make appointments there to in the manner prescribed by the ordinance. Which means even if he takes the agenda to the executive council and the executive council approves it, he has to go as per the ordinance. And ordinance says there has to be advertisement 
there has to be screening, then there will be selection committee, then finally the executive council will approve the selection committee list which was flow, which was selected and that's and after that appointment letter will be issued. The fifth meeting of the executive council held on 11 October 2022 at 10 a.m. in conference room of administrative building. The other things are there. The matter concerning to Rohit Prasad is this. It says appointment of senior consultant slash technical officer. The nomenclature itself is wrong because it is outside the UGC's uh, model CRR. The numbers is given NOEC 185 2022, uh, then uh, column 8, column 2. The chairman advised the council that a senior consultant technical officer with IT background is required in the office of vice chancellor and may be engaged on contractual basis with the payment of monthly remuneration below or less than 1 lakh rupees, the council noted the same. Simply, the council, the council noted the same. It didn't say that the council approved it. Now, let's believe that the council approved it. Even if council has approved it, it was important for VC, any VC of any university being the head of the institute should know the rule of UGC. Let's presume that because it says the council noted the same. BC said, I need somebody, they know that. They didn't say we approve. Let's presume that yes, they have approved, although it doesn't. It's now the duty of the vice chancellor to write to UGC that I need a technical officer. Sanction me a post. Because when they sanction you a post, because the same model CRR that we have clearly states that if you want to create a post, you have to first take permission. And I will give you a copy, it's in the same CRR uh, rule. That we will slowly and slowly unravel that what was the reason because his utility, like I have said earlier in many of the interviews, that his utility in Nehu we don't understand. But that is besides the point because in the first place itself, his appointment is illegitimate, his appointment is totally illegal, and that's why it is a very important thing to remember. And then he also said a lot of other things. Self is the reason that he has been illegally appointed, and that's why we said we are least bothered about what quality he has. We are least bothered about what qualification he has. We are simply saying that you have not appointed somebody by following due process. That is more than enough a reason for you to remove. And hence, a person who was illegally appointed, there cannot be any justification from VC side that I need a reason to remove him. I think he can remove him immediately because his, we are questioning his appointment itself. Then we need not have any other reasons for him to remove and precisely and and he I, I remember he said that I don't want to do any illegal action that Nehuta or Jack is telling me to do. On the contrary, we are telling you not to do this illegal action. Stop it right here. Remove him immediately. At least you will save a little bit of the respect that you have as a vice chancellor. But I think he is still adamant because he doesn't seem to understand what is happening. Now, why I'm saying this? You know, if you go by the uh, same statute that, that we the new app, here he can now use his power. That same that I have read, the statutes, uh, the, the 12.3, uh, it says, the vice chancellor may, if in his opinion, immediate action is necessary on this matter. This is where now he can use his role. That this is requires immediate action, remove him, report to an executive council that I have removed this guy because his appointment was totally illegal. I have not followed the model CRR of UGC. I have violated UGC norms. I have violated new act, statute, ordinance, rules and regulation. Hence, now this is my reason to remove him. But he is hand in glove with this guy. He is not ready to accept that he has done a mistake and that's why he's trying to still shield him but he has no other way to escape now because now it is implicated and through media we want to make sure that each and every concerned citizen of this beautiful state of ours should know what kind of illegality he is doing to an extent that he dares to violate UGC which is very very strict. UGC takes it very very seriously that any of his criteria that is important you, you, you will be e at any point of time, you will be taken to task. And I'm sure at some point of time, he will be taken to task. Now facing the music, the music which is so loud, which will be deafening for his ears because illegal activity cannot be hidden for a long period of time. After that, what we did is, which is very, very important to understand, we met this VC many a time from Nehuta. Then finally, Nehunsa also wrote at some point of time during the March of September, uh, toward the September end, then when we formed the jack, we gave him a deadline. 10 days deadline was given, which means right from the month of March, 
this issue that we have raised with him, he basically gave us a deaf ear, thinking that, oh, these are teachers association, non-teaching association student, what will they do to me? He actually didn't realize that when you do wrong, people come together. And when people come together, especially the stakeholders like Nihunsa, Nihusu, and, and Nehuta, now he's feeling the music in real sense. And that's where we are seeing that this guy has no moral authority, no moral right whatsoever to come to media and say that I have done the right thing. And that's why we are very, very strict on this. And we will make sure that that come be one. And, and I'll just read it for you. This came from uh, the, the PS to Vice Chancellor. He said, respected sir, I'm as director, this is to convey that Vice Chancellor desires to meet Nehuta office bearers tomorrow, the 18th of October, blah, 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 at 4 p.m. in the committee room to discuss the following agenda. It is requested to kindly make it convenient to attend meeting with regards PS to Vice Chancellor. So I replied to the PS of Vice Chancellor, look at the poor English that somebody has who doesn't understand. I'll read this later and I have, I'll give you a copy. I wrote to this guy because this guy is known to me. This PS of Vice Chancellor is a nice guy, so I always become friendly. So I wrote to him, hi. The Nihuta EC is not keen to meet the VC anymore on this issue. We can meet only after notification of the requisition emergent EC meeting. Accordingly, he is again being requested to notify the requisition EC, signed by 100 responsible members, immediately without further delay, as per regulation, blah, blah, blah. This is the only way forward for NEP, as mentioned in our previous letter to the VC dated this, which was, which was submitted to his good office on 4th of October, signed by me. Now, anybody who knows a little bit of English will say that this letter is not addressed to me. But he knowingly brought this letter to media to malign us with a malafide intention. This letter was never wrote to him directly, it was to his peers. And nobody, because vice chancellor don't write, correspond to anybody. But he was trying to malign the teachers association. So I thought it is important that you get a copy and you see it. Now that is one issue that is... that is Which is pending for approval. So the claim that uh, bringing Rohit to the university for online mark sheet, I think it is uh, not correct. Because this has been done clearly by this company. And it is ready. It's only waiting for the approval. And even for the, the software is ready even for NEP. It's completely ready. The person concerned from the company had come a few months ago. He had done the complete groundwork and NEP software for NEP for uh, doing everything, the data and everything, they are ready. So whenever NEP is implemented, as it is implemented now, they are ready to go ahead. But it's waiting for, pending for approval. So, so uh, what the vice has said that day that uh, bringing Rohit for online certificate and NEP uh, does not have much weightage. So, and um, going much further, uh, that day the Vice Chancellor had said the press conference that uh, this uh, statutory post, like the Minister and Finance Officer, he will be appointing in the month of January, February. I do not understand the reason for the delay, because this post has been advertised last year, if I'm not mistaken, the month of November, and the screening process also has been completed. We have asked him and demanded one company from Bangalore, a very renowned company, which has been looking after many universities. It is a logistics company. From 2002 from to 2015, it was looking after the annual system. And when the semester system started, the same company using a software called Takshila, it is providing the, all the data and the mark sheets of the students and along with the certificates and the registration. And the same company is ready with the online